entrepreneurship started for me as a side hustle that has now grown into a full-fledged business model that we work from every single yep. day. And I think today we should pay homage to the side hustle. The little bit of activity that you do moves the needle so much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can go from one or two a day and go from two to four a day mm -hmm. With very little effort, just more consistency, maybe one extra post on social media, maybe mm -hmm. going to one extra event, and it doesn't take much to move the needle. As we grow, we start to lose that excitement. I know I need to supplement my income somehow, mm -hmm. but what do I do? One thing that I would encourage you to do would be to create a plan for the money that you're making from your side mm -hmm. hustle. Make a list of the things that you are naturally good at, things that you enjoy, and little details about what you do on your job. The thing that you decide to do, I would hope that people start looking at it as training mm -hmm. for something else. Chances are, the first thing you do is not going to be the thing that makes you more. Start something that can supplement your income. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. Donnie and I are here to help you with your entrepreneurial journey. How are you feeling? I am feeling amazing this morning. I'm not telling the truth. You look really light. Yeah, first of all. Can I introduce my own qualms? No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying what I know that they're thinking when they see it. Yeah. So if you guys have been following along, you know that I am on a skin correction journey. Mm -hmm. I suffer from um, an overgrowth of a certain hormone that causes me to have adult hormonal acne. And I have been I have tried everything from parasite cleanses to gut detoxes to panels and screenings and blood work and lab work and every medication mm -hmm except for the nasty letter A word. Accutane. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly didn't know that was the word. That is the word, the nasty letter A word. And I did not do Accutane when I was younger because <clears throat> you cannot get pregnant on Accutane. Mm. Or the, if you do, the fetus won't survive or be significantly damaged. So they make mm. you sign like all these waivers, blah, 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 to get started on it. And because nothing is helping, like at my big age of 44, I'm mm. tired of dealing with it. Yeah. And now I'm starting my journey with Accutane. So I start that in about maybe 30 more days. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, from all of the other breaking out uh, that I did, I get scars. So I have really bad scars. And I got this really, really, really deep chemical pill, a really, really, really deep chemical pill that you wear for 12 hours. I get them. I get chemical uh, pills all the time. But this one is a really, really deep one. So if you can see. This is oh, what, wow. Mm -hmm, hold on. This is so your what, face was like red, red for 12 hours to the point of like even when you wash it off, it's still like stained red. And so it peels off several layers of your skin. Well, when you get a chemical pill this deep, your skin is really sensitive. Like I can't really touch my face right now. It's, it's burning, it's irritated, but I have to keep this sunscreen mask on. And let me just show you um, what I have on my face right now is a sunscreen mask that puts this white cast over my face. But what it's supposed to look like every single day, like I can't wear makeup, I can't do anything. So I'm actually doing a very brave thing right now. Yeah. I am shooting the Social Proof podcast without a lick of makeup on my oh, wow. face. You look good. The, shut up, Dave. You do. Um, don't see. I don't know. This is not look bad. You just look lighter. Can you see this? This yeah. is how the mask looks. Yeah. It's this. I'm supposed to be sitting right now with my face looking like this. Oh, so it's still on right now. It's just a very light layer of Got the sunscreen. It. And so also, um, this, the chemical peel actually peels off the very top layers of your skin. So what you see, imagine if you scrape your knee mm -hmm. and, you know, first it's pink from the bleeding and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it has that white layer as it's starting to heal. This is the white layer as it's starting to heal. And then my skin, your skin turns over every 21 days. So it takes about three weeks for my natural color to come back. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. So, so not too heavy on me in the comments, y'all. Not an ounce of makeup, chemical peel. My face is still peeling. They may not be able to see it, but you see all of this? I oh, got yeah. all the moles removed on my face. So you see like all the light. They won't be able to see it. Hear you. Oh, yeah. you see all the light? Yeah. All these moles. I had like 50 moles on my face that were flesh tone. You probably just thought it was like. Mm -hmm. So I got them all burned off. The little brown spots that you see are the scab of what the oh, skin looks goodness. like. Yes. So we. So you don't look. You don't look bad. You just look lighter. Yeah, I'm not my normal. First of all, look. I'm so much. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you, look at my hand compared oh, to my okay, face. I see. I see. Okay, it's not that much not different, but it is different. Yeah. Anyway, so yep, here we go. This is Donnie in full, full, authentic transparency. This is what your girl looked like. That red light doesn't help either. Come turn this red light off. Yeah, let's move the red light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks more, uh, looks kind of strange. I look um, like Michael Jackson. It's giving Michael Jackson. Yeah, just move it over a little bit. Just move, no, can it's giving going, Trey, you better put one good edit on the thumbnail, okay? <laughs> one good edit on this thumbnail. Anyway, okay. other than that, um, you asked me how I was doing. You mm. know what? I woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. Really? I woke up on the wrong side of the bed because I went to sleep. On the wrong side. I went to sleep with an attitude yesterday. Mm. Yesterday was a day full of attitude for me. I had an mm. attitude with you. Um, I had an attitude with... I'm not going to ask what it, was, what it was about. So You got on my nerves yesterday, okay? You significantly got on my nerves. We're Period. not... <laughs> and I'm not going to go through it. We're not going to go through it. Go through. It wouldn't even make no sense. got on my it. nerves yesterday. Anyway, I had an attitude with everybody. And I don't know what's going on with me, but I'm starving like I haven't eaten all week, mm -hmm. like right now. And I've eat I haven't eaten today, but like yesterday was so bad. I'm on edge because I can't get full. I don't know what that's about. Um, and no, I'm not pregnant because when I posted it, everybody's like, oh, you're pregnant. Mm. So anyway, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning, still had this attitude. And I got out of the bed and I was like, oh, <clears throat> this day, I can't wait. And I said, you know what? I'm not starting my day like that. I immediately checked myself and I did something really funny. What's that? I got back in the bed and I got back on, I got out on the other side. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, I get it. Okay. You woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I got, uh, well, and so actually, you got actually, back in the bed. Actually, I slept on the sofa last night and you know, you can't get out on the other side. So I got, Back on the sofa, put the covers back on me, rolled under the sofa to the other side of the sofa <laughs> and got off the sofa. And it instantly shifted my whole attitude. So now mm -hmm. this is going to be my practice because I'm not perfect. Sometimes you wake up in a bad mood. Yeah. Now I have a physical connection to how to correct it. And immediately when I did something so silly, I don't even know what made me do it, but I did it. I said, you know, what? I'm going to get back in the bed. I'm getting back out. I'm getting off the other side. When I did that, all I could do was, was stand there and laugh. I bet y'all was about to say, I know you was laughing at your own self. Like that. I was that. laughing at myself for a second, but it worked. And good. now I'm on the right side of the bed. Good, good, How are good. You? Um, uh, I don't know. Yesterday was a lot for me, too. It was a lot. It's like certain things that you, I like when I can control what I can control, but I can't control what my son does or my daughter or like there's like, you know, like weird stuff just happens mm -hmm. and there's nothing you can do about it. Right. So um, it was like one of those that just like hit me from every single angle. Like what? Um, I had a long conversation with the people who do my taxes mm -hmm. and that wasn't a pleasant conversation. Okay. Um, emotionally, I'm just feeling like there's like so many things that need to get done. The person from the venue for podcast summit, it's not, uh, he just doesn't respond. And I'm trying to lock down the date because I have this goal to have everything locked down by a certain time, but they're dragging their feet. So what can I do? I can't control that. I can't like go up there and grab them by a collar and say, hey, send me the contract. So, that, you know what I mean? I could. Yeah, to, to was like, I mean. <laughs> but Dewan you just can't. You, huh? Dewan is a goon. Yeah, Dewan is a goon for sure. But um, no, nah, it's just certain things you can't control. But this was a lesson for me because um, I got an opportunity 
to sit in that and realize that I can't control it. it like, like I'm, I'm super grateful. And I made a post yesterday and I was like, yo, I am having a mentally draining day and I need some words of encouragement. Did you get them? Yeah. Yo, mad people commented words of encouragement. Some of them was like, yo, pull your skirt down, B. I was like, yo, that actually helped. DeWine said like, that? No, nah, no. Nah, so it was like some other comments. Some comments was like, yo, bro, like, what are you talking about? Calm down. It ain't that bad. I'm like, yo, you know what? You're right. It wasn't, yo, really, it wasn't the motivational <laughs> comments that motivated me. It, it was, was the ones that said, like, yo, stop acting like a baby. Go, you know what I mean? I was like, yo, you're right. Mm. So, um, yeah, man, I, I, and, and, and I realized that all of my, pro all of my problems are first world problems. Were you acting like a baby or were you just being a man who needed to vent and that was your opportunity and you took it and then the comment said, stop acting like a baby and now you won't vent again in the future? Well, no, I, I didn't vent actually. You didn't vent? No, it was, it, it was like internally, like I, I it wasn't like I'm coming in here yelling at people or like I go home and I'm, I'm upset with my wife. It wasn't none of that. It was just, it's a lot. And then I'm sitting back thinking like, okay, this is going to be over soon. I understand when you have days like that, it doesn't last for a week. It's like that day. Sometimes. Not really. Hmm. Not really. I have enough things going on in my life that there's always some good. For sure. And especially if you lock into the fact that you get to, after all this stuff that I'm going through, I'm going to go home. There's not a lot of people that can go home. There's people locked up right now. They're having a bad day in jail and they're not going home. There's some people in the hospital. They're not going home. There's some people that are homeless. They don't have a home to go to. Mm -hmm. At the end of all of this, I'm going home. And that immediately, I think those, those comments of the like, yo, you know, I think I needed to see that because it was funny for me. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <clears throat> First so I shook it all off. You're good. You're feeling amazing. Again. Yeah, I have these days every now and again. But, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't kill me, mm -hmm. which I think it makes I'm you stronger. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I am a lot more <laughs> emotionally. I, I'm, I'm a lot. I'm, I'm really emotionally resilient where emotions don't like really travel outside of me. You know what I mean? And I start lashing out at people. So I'm happy about that. Emotionally resilient. I think I'm emotionally resilient. Good. I don't lash out at people. Like I don't just start telling people off. <clears throat> I'm not even gonna I'm, look over I'm there. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm not, it was just, uh, I'm sorry. Bro. But you had to see it. It was like, like this. I lash out at people. And then you said it and you was like, and it was like, I'm not gonna say who it was. <laughs> I push out some of my energy on people. <laughs> that is funny. So yeah, good. Whatever. As long as you know you're emotionally resilient, so it's cool. I'm emotionally intelligent. Maybe I'm not as emotionally resilient as I thought. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. intentionally not turning my face because I feel like I'm in the right position to not look so light skin on uh, looks so pale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you should turn because you look red now. I'd rather red than white. You know what? Also, I'm working on not being snarky. Okay, so, I'm snarky for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm snarky for sure. Like it's just being like condescending. So that's my that's the extent of my lashing out where I start being condescending, but then I just start, you know, it is what it is. But anyway, uh I'm happy to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You're an entrepreneur. You love this game? You know, I really do. Yeah. I really do. Like it is so many people complain about it. And I'm like, do you know how lucky and blessed we are to get the opportunity yeah. to create and choose these own paths for ourselves every for sure. single day? Like, for real, like we get to solve these problems. We get to have these issues. We get to overcome these obstacles, but we also get to reap the reward and we get to live yeah. a life based on the things that we're accomplishing. Um, I am so grateful for being an entrepreneur. Sure. But you know what? What? Entrepreneurship started for me as a side hustle. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Entrepreneurship started for me as a, a side hustle that has now grown into a full fledged business model that we work from every yep. single day. And I think today we should pay homage to the side hustle. Absolutely. Man, we go let's talk let's talk to the person who has a job mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. You remember having a job, right? I do. It is going on 10 years since I've had a job. Yeah. yeah. So it, I think one of the most wonderful places you can be is not just having a job and really not just being an entrepreneur, but there is this there's this little little piece of pie. It's like the sweetest piece of pie where you have a job and, and you have a side hustle. Yo. That might have been the most exciting time of my life. For sure. For sure. Like figuring out the moment while you're on your shift of when I can actually work this. Come no, on. Don't get a call or an order. While you're at work, come on, man. You might feel like quitting that day. That oh day gosh. might be like you're working, you're working your full time job, and you get that notification that an order just came through your website. You get that text message that says, "How can I get X, Y, and Z from you? Mm-hmm. Can you meet me with that t shirt this week? Can you?" Bl-? While you're at work, Bruh. it makes life feel so worth it. And I think here's why it's so exciting, is because you're in a situation. Where um, you don't see the end, you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. But then you start this business and you see light. Mm-hmm. Like you see, one day I'm not going to be here. There has to be a good feeling of um, of freedom, like when a slave is free. But when you know you're working on a plan. Mm-hmm. To get out of this nasty situation. I can imagine Harriet them them, them days before she's leaving. Mm. Remember, like you can she can see she yo, there is going to be, it's gonna be so sweet when I get to this thing. Yeah. And the vision, the I the vision is typically uh sweeter than the actual attainment of it. Mm-hmm. Remember, remember. When you first uh, knew you were going to make $100,000. Yeah. Remember you like creeping up to the 100000 in mm-hmm. your business. And you're like, yo, I'm going to get there. Mm-hmm. The hope and the idea. Thrilling. It, it'll keep you up at night. Thrilling. Like every single time you look at your bank balance or you look at your strike mm-hmm. account to see how much money you have saved or yeah. how much money you've generated. It's like you can't wake you don't want to go to sleep because you're wanting to figure out how you can get that much closer yeah. the next day. But then you also want to go to sleep because you can't wait for the next day uh, for people 100%. to start buying stuff from you. It's like another day to get closer and closer to yeah. that goal. But do you remember maybe six months in a year after you made a hundred thousand? Mm-hmm. You kind of forget that you even made the hundred thousand. And then it's not enough. It's not enough. You start creating complaints and reasons why I have to now make more money. Yeah. You start creating bigger goals, new goals. Um, you could even potentially start feeling a little ungrateful. A hundred percent. You remember last couple of years, we make X amount of dollars, but then you, like if if you your launch only makes a quarter million dollars, and you're like. I can't Dang. believe this, like, but the, the, the dream, the vision, like being in a situation that you don't want to be in, once you get there, it's never as sweet as the thought you had in your head. Yo, it's never as sweet. I remember exactly that. I remember when I was going super hard on the challenges, even helping clients have seven figure experiences yeah. on their challenges, but I couldn't get past, I think at highest was like two thirty seven or something like that. Yeah. And I'm heated. Mm. I'm so like, why am I not making a million dollars in a day? <laughs> like 237,000 in a day was yeah. like bad news. Yeah. Imagine go like back to that place where you've made $101,000. Your goal was a hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. You made a hundred and one thousand yeah. dollars. It's now January first of the next year, and you're looking at that hundred and one thousand dollars. Like I didn't do enough. Yeah, 
it could have been more. If I had just done this, this, and this, then I would have made, now you forget that the goal in the first place was, was the hundred grand. Yeah. Now you forget how you were going to be so grateful and all these plans. Mm-hmm. And then it becomes, if I had just done this, this, and this, I could have made that. And I could have had this. Yeah. There's a lot of things you can do with $500. I mean, you can have a night out with your significant other. You could buy some really expensive shoes. Well, really nice shoes are about, Double five hundred dollars. Um, you could buy a course, or you can learn something for five hundred dollars. But I have something better for you to do with the five hundred dollars. I want to meet with you every single morning for the rest of your life. Well, maybe not the rest of your life, but every morning, Monday through Friday, for the rest of the year. I have information and game that have allowed me to build a successful business, business, a successful community, and a successful life all the way around. But I want to share that with you. But the only way we can accomplish this is not me selling you a course, not me giving you a one-on-one consultation, because even with that, you'll get the information, but you'll need more. I want to meet with you every single morning. Now, would I meet with someone every morning for 500 bucks for a year? And the answer is yes. Actually, we've been doing this thing since 2017. We have what's called the morning meetup. Every single month we have a theme, whether it's social media, whether it's motivation, whether it's strategy, whatever it is, we have a theme for the month. And every morning in that month, we have a conversation around that topic. And I am giving a wealth of knowledge, not only myself, but a lot of friends, a lot of people that you see on this podcast, they join every single week. So you need a community of people that you can grow with and you need a coach. I'm your coach. The Morning Meetup is your community. Go to themorningmeetup.com. It's $499 and I will meet you every single morning for an entire year. Give it a shot. Man, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm hoping everybody is like, is listening, especially if, if you have a job and you're, you have a side hustle, you don't have a side hustle just yet, but you, you are in a situation I want you to know that you are probably in the most beautiful place that you can be. I'm telling you. Do you remember it? Like, did you have, a, when you grew up, did you have a learner's permit, then a license? Mm-hmm. Before you get the license, it's like, yo, once I get this license. Once I get this it's license. It's up and st- I'm out. Everywhere. Oh my gosh. And then you get your license and your mom wants you to go to a grocery store and pick out the dry cleaning and go to like, Run errands. You yeah, become her errand child. I'm like, bro, get I don't want. I don't want to do this. And now I don't want to drive. It's, it's too cool. much pressure. I'm good. It's too much responsibility after you get the thing that you want. That I think that's what people don't like. It requires maintenance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's too much responsibility. Now you have to do it again. Yeah. Now you kind of forced to create a bigger goal. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have to take care of it. Yeah. You have to account for it. Mm-hmm. You have to pay taxes Come on. on it. Oh my you gotta gosh. you gotta start doing some things that you don't want to do and it makes it just a little less attractive. Yo, that side hustle stage is probably the most if you are an entrepreneur who has that side hustle and especially yeah. at that stage where you're only getting one or two sales mm-hmm. a couple of days out of the week. Yeah. Yo, that's the most exciting time of life. Uh, what? One Absolutely. or two sales came in this week. Come on. And you're sitting there trying to figure out how you can make it a sale every day. Mm-hmm. And you have that one week yeah. where that particular day you made all the sales for the week. And you're like, man, yeah, 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 if yeah, I could yeah, just yeah, do yeah. this every day. Yep. That really is. It was such an exciting time. It was such an exciting time. It was probably the most goal focused I've ever been. A hundred percent. A hundred percent because it's like the little bit of activity that you do moves the needle so much. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can go from one or two a day and go from two to four a day mm-hmm. with very little effort, just more consistency, maybe one extra post on social media, maybe mm-hmm. going to one extra event and it, it doesn't take much to move the needle. Yeah. And I think as we grow, we start to lose that excitement. Mm-hmm. So let's let's Donnie talk to the person who has a job and a dream or let's first talk to the person who has a job and they don't know what to do. Mm. So what do we do right now? I have a job. I, w- I know I need to supplement my income somehow. Mm-hmm. But what do I do? Yeah, I think the first thing that you do is after you've decided that I need to do something, don't know what to do. The first thing you do is write down a list of things that you're actually good at. Mm-hmm. So it could be your job. 
Um, it could be that you do something right now at work every single day that you could literally turn into a side mm-hmm. hustle. Uh, that's something that I did. I turned my job. I had many side hustles for the record, but occasionally I turned a job into a side hustle. Um, I also wrote down a list of things that I was just really good at and things that I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. And I took my love of fashion and created a side hustle. I took my love of music and made it a side hustle. Like I'm a dress anyway. Yeah. So I might as well figure out how to make a couple bucks off of this. Yeah. Um, People would always back in the day ask me like, where'd you get this from? Where'd you get your sneakers from? I was a sneaker plug back in the day. Like I would go around. I was the person who was in these music studios and the producers and engineers are asking me where I'm getting my sneakers from. And I'd be like, oh, I can get them. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, I would take their order, go get their sneakers like you know, we had Walters. I think Walters yeah, is still there downtown. Yeah. But Walters was the spot. For sure. I would be like, oh, I'll go get them. And I would add like $25 to the price. They knew it. You know, it was like my concierge fee. Mm-hmm. And I was a sneaker plug that way. Um, I started in music doing little things like wow. singing hooks, recording. So make a list of the things that you are naturally good at, things that you enjoy, and little details about what you do on your job. Yeah. And then let's start narrowing down and having conversations and putting some thought there. I love it. I love it. Um, I, I think it's important if you have a side hustle or or you're trying to figure out what that side hustle is going to be. Um, don't overthink it. Just start something. Mm. Just start something. Because mm-hmm. the, the thing that you decide to do, I would hope that people start looking at it as training mm-hmm. for something else. Chances are the first thing you do is not going to be the thing that makes you millions because mm-hmm. you have to go through the process of learning certain skills, learning a sale, learning how to learning how to listen to customers about a product. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A bunch of people will tell you the same thing. You're like, oh, well, let me switch it up. But internally, you hear a bunch of people saying something bad about your product and you are stubborn enough to say, well, they don't know what they're talking about. Well, yeah. sometimes we need to listen to those people. Mm-hmm. Or maybe we're, we don't listen. And maybe we're talking to the wrong person. Like, you still have to go through this process of understanding what a business is. Mm-hmm. How do you talk to people? Why are you so afraid to ask for the sale? Mm-hmm. But if you don't ever start something, I don't care what it is. Just start. Start something. something that can supplement your income. Yeah. And remember that the side hustle is to supplement your income. Yes. The side hustle is not yet in the beginning to replace your full-time income. In the beginning is supplemental income. The money that like understand what it's for It's the money that makes you breathe a little easier. It's the money that helps you stop making payment arrangements on bills and allows you to pay your bills in full every single month. Sure. It's the money that allows you to travel, Mm -hmm. you know. And so this one thing that I would uh, encourage you to do. What are we on three? I don't know if we started the numbers yet. (laughs) Um, But one thing that I would encourage you to do would be to create a plan for the money that you're making from your side Mm -hmm. hustle. So like to say, um, you know what? I want to go to Africa this year with my family or I want to go to Africa next year with my family. I want you to then research, like literally get with a travel agent or take the time to go to all the websites and put the trip together. Yeah. Go ahead and put this trip together. Get every single number down to the excursions, mm-hmm. the flights, the upgrades. You want to fly Delta one and Put all of that together and get that number. Let's say that number is 14,000 for your family to go to Africa. Maybe. Right. Let's say that number is 14,000. Then I want you to look at that list of interests and activities and skill sets that you created and say, what's more most realistic to help? What side hustle can I create that will most realistically help me get this $14,000? Yes. A hundred percent. For those that like are doing it for a luxury item or my first like expensive watch that I bought. I really, really wanted this watch and I came up with an idea to do an event, but that event was the sole purpose was to make enough money to pay for the thing that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And that gave me a lesson in being targeted. When I first started my side hustle, my first goal was to just replace my bills. So 
it wasn't that much. There's Atlanta when Atlanta was affordable. I think my rent was seven hundred dollars for a thousand bedroom apartment. <laughs> Back in the day, oh my gosh, it was like you get a little baby mansion for seven fifty. Yeah, but uh, I think I had a two bedroom uh, apartment, mm-hmm. and I want to say it was like six seven hundred dollars, something like that. But I, I'm like, yo, let me start a side hustle, and I started calculating my bills. Kind of how you're saying, yo, calculate what it's going to take for you to accomplish this. Yeah. And then work back to what do I have to do to make this? So my electricity might have been 60 bucks. Mm-hmm. My water might have been 40 bucks, water and sewer, something like that. Uh, my rent, $600. Um, and I'm looking at, you know, I didn't have a car note at the time. I had car insurance. And I had all of these bills. And it might have came out to, I don't know, $1,700, maybe 2000 with like credit card debt that I had. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how can I make a certain amount of money. How can I make $2,000 every single month just to take care of the bills? Because wouldn't it be wonderful if my job income I could live off? Mm-hmm. Not not my necessities, but I can, this business takes care of my bills and I get to live for free and I get to go have drinks with my friends. And the next time my friends say, let's go to Miami, I'm like, Psh, bet, Done. I got my check coming up and I can use a whole check yeah. on me. Yeah. I wasn't thinking of anything else, but how can I live for free? And I think that's an attainable goal for people. Yeah, that is. Um, my very first side hustle uh, came about as a teenager when I wanted to just save $100 a month. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a real big deal. Come on, man. $100 a month. <laughs> what do I have to do to be able to sell mm-hmm. $100 a month? Um, and then, you know, most of, most of us have had side hustles successfully. Yeah. Doing things around the house for our parents. Yeah. Like maybe you get money and allowance naturally, but if you do that extra thing, you're going to make just a little bit more money. Like Mm -hmm. maybe you get a $20 a week allowance because you're just you, but you know that if you wash the car, but if I put the, uh, what's the stuff that you put on the tires, Uh, if I do the the tire shine on the tires, my mom will give me another $5. Mm -hmm. If I do this, if I bring in the mail every single day, I can get another $10 for this. So most of us have the experience of, creating a goal and having a side hustle mindset to get it. Like you already know you want to go to that party this weekend. You got to do a couple of extra things around the house to pay for the $10 admission to get into this party as a teenager. Mm -hmm. Now as an adult, you got to tap back into that childlike hustle and that childlike imagination and say, look, I've got some adult things that I want to do. Let me think about some side hustles that I can leverage to, to get to it. But I promise you, it's so much easier when you have a goal in mind, yeah, right? Sure. So maybe it's a vacation for you. Maybe it's a home renovation project. Like the way that I live my life right now, I typically don't enjoy spending the money that I already have for a new thing. Mm-hmm. I want to, like, I've already accounted for that money. Yeah. It's on an old thing that I already thought about or already purchased. Like anything new, I want to create a new stream of income for to pay for it. That's just how my mind works or it makes me feel like I'm losing money. Right. So attach that idea to that. And also if you're sitting there and you're drawing a blank and saying, well, I don't know what I'm good at. I don't Mm -hmm. have any interest. I hate my job. You can text like the five or 10 people that know you well and say, Hey, I'm thinking about starting a side hustle if you could guess what that side hustle would be, what would that be? That's good. What, what would you guess it is? Or you could ask people, you could frame the question like, what do you think I'm the go to for? Yeah. Right. It could be that you are starting a side hustle. I don't know. Um, editing your friend's resumes. That mm. was a thing that I did back in the day. Yeah. Um, I used to write papers for people. Writing is super easy um, for me. I used to write papers, edit resumes. What else? What kind of side hustles have you had? Oh, my God. Selling weed? <laughs> oh, my God. What? Yeah. You know? The no- neighborhood dope boy? Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, nah, but I was, I was uh, painting T-shirts. Painting, so hand custom, painting. yeah, hand painting t-shirts. So we get uh, fabric paint from the store. Mm-hmm. So you take the t-shirt, you put like a, um, you put like cardboard underneath it. Mm-hmm. You get fabric paint. Mm-hmm. Oh, what was the name of the brand? It was just some fabric paint. And I get all these different types of brushes from Michaels or Hobby Lobby. And I'm not an artist, 
But at this time, there was like this abstract brand called uh, Mesquine. So Mesquine, it was a big brand up in Philly where it's just like splatters of paint everywhere. Mm -hmm. But it was like, it was dope. So we started doing that. Mm -hmm. And I got it from my boy uh, T-Dot out in New Jersey. And he started doing it. Then I'd like kind of stole his whole swag. Yeah. And like we get like a, um, a uh, heat press, heat press a picture on there, right? And then we paint around it to design it. It was just, mm -hmm. it was just incredible. But yeah, so you put the little cardboard under there and you just paint with brush strokes and things of that nature. What do you want on your shirt? I'll put you know your name on there. What happened was it started as a side hustle just to make some extra money. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't that good at it. But after I kept doing it, I got really good at it. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting more orders than I could comfortably handle. This is, this is what happens, I think, to a lot of people. The side hustle starts working, but then you start feeling like it's a job and it becomes too much. You start to complain, it, you start to complain about the blessing that you have, and then we stop. Mm, can I raise you one better than that? Talk to me. The side hustle starts working and it starts requiring more of your time and you start telling yourself, well, I got a job. I don't have time to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And just when you ever saw that meme where they're digging and they're yeah. digging and they're digging and, and the one guy keeps digging until he reaches the pot of treasure, yeah. but the other one stops. And if he had dug like one more time, he was just about to hit this pot of treasure. And uh, so now that side hustle starts working and it's like, man, this is taking more and more and more time. I'm not getting enough sleep to go to work or yeah. this is taking too, I have to take off too much. I don't have any more vacation days. And maybe this was the answer to the prayer. Like if you had just kept going and made more time for that side hustle, that side hustle would be your full-time work. Yeah, uh, but what about the people who started the side hustle just to have side income, mm -hmm. but that side income is growing bigger than you anticipated because mm -hmm. you never anticipated this to be your full time thing. It's something that you like to do yeah. outside of work. You like the extra money, but you don't really want to be a full time business owner. No, of course not. You don't even have the money to show for it anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what do we I do? I mean, you don't want to be a, you stay a side hustler. Honestly, yeah. <coughs> everybody's not meant to be a full-time business For owner. Sure. Some people thrive well in that sweet spot mm -hmm. of side hustle. Yeah. And you have to really be honest with yourself because what you don't want to do is go all in, quit your job because this happens all the time. You think just because you start making money that you're yeah. fit to be a business owner. And there's a very, 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 there's a, a list of distinct differences yeah. between being a side hustle, a side hustler or a hustler and a business owner. Yeah. And you got to ask yourself, you got to really sit down and say, Hey, do I want to be responsible for fulfilling orders um, every single day? Yeah. Do I want to be responsible for having to have inventory, not just having inventory when I feel like I need some extra money? Yeah. Do I want to be responsible for one day employing people and managing people? Do I want to be responsible for paying payroll? Do I want to be responsible for taxes that are taxed now at a higher tax bracket than they yeah. were before? Do I want to be responsible for reporting to the government? Like, mm -hmm. do I want to be responsible for thinking about marketing strategies? Do I want to be responsible for deploying business systems in my yeah. business like or do I just want to keep taking orders on my phone and collecting money via cash app yeah yeah I, okay that that is a really good point so let's right now just decide what you want out of this side hustle mm -hmm. is it just want. extra money yeah. like you're not trying to you're not trying to like go super hard but maybe you want to go into work your whole goal is to go into work without the pressure of I need this job to survive. Yeah. Maybe that's the maybe that's the goal. Mm -hmm. So let's just decide what we want to do. And another note, I don't know if this is related at all. I would stress that if you are wanting to make extra money or you're needing to make extra money, you got to supplement your income some way. Start a side hustle, don't get a second job. Start a if you need to supplement your income some kind of way, start a side hustle. Don't get a four freaking sure. Don't get a second job. I don't remember ever. And I could be lying here. I could be. But I don't remember ever having a second job. I've always had side hustles. I don't think I've ever worked. I've always believed that two jobs are for two people. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> maybe there was maybe a point in time, and I correct myself here, there might have been a point in time where I worked in college, UPS as a package handler, mm -hmm. and Best Buy at the same time. Yeah. Um, because they weren't giving me enough hours. So on some days I work Best Buy, some days I work UPS. But as an adult, I don't think I've ever had a second job, but I didn't have two, three, four side hustles at one time. Oh, for sure. I didn't have a second job. Yeah. And you know what I found? And this is in my situation and talking to countless other people who get a second job, it never solves the problem. I have always done the math. Now, I don't know how second jobs work today with like inflation and the new minimum wage and all that stuff. But back in the day, um, I've considered yeah. second jobs very much. I remember working, you know, say a full time job that could have been paying me at that time, maybe 15, 16 dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. Needing a second job to make whatever I've always had a financial goal attached to it. Like, so mm -hmm. let's say I need to make an extra thousand dollars a month and that second job only paying $7 and 25 cents an hour. Mm -hmm. And then I'm doing the math. Like it will take me X amount of time a week just to make this extra thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. I can just sell my clothes on eBay, which For was sure. what I was the queen of. Like mm -hmm. I became the queen of, of reselling my clothes on eBay. And I would say, okay, it'll take me seven hours at this rate to make $50. I can put one garment on eBay and spend the whole week trying to sell it yeah. and make that same $50. For sure. That's what happened to me 100% of the time, which is why I could never go through yeah. that I can remember a, side, a, a second job. Yeah, bro, I, I, don't, I, don't, I never had a second job. You think, oh, I'll get a second job and I'll have all this extra money and you don't have all this extra money. No. And what I, what I realized, even when I had my second job, financially, for some reason, I was in the same position financially that I was when I just had one job, even though I have extra income coming in because the problem wasn't the job. It wasn't the, the income, it was me my spending mm -hmm. habits. Mm -hmm. If I have a hundred dollars in the account, I'm going to spend 80 for sure. I'm spending if, 95. If I get a second job and I have 200, you're just going to spend 190. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're just going to spend more money. Yeah. So before you consider getting a second job, first, I think people need to consider how much is going out because typically it's not a income problem. It's a, it's a spending problem yeah. or a money management problem. And if you get a second job, you'll still deal with that same issue. But the cool thing about a side hustle is, and I, I don't know if it could be good or bad, the fact that you have money coming in on a regular basis, it's easier, it was easier for me to be able to segment the income. So if my check is coming every two weeks, mm -hmm. that's two weeks of no money where I'm, I'm spending, 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 and I'm in a situation, so when I get that lump, lump sum of money, I'm taking care of all the stuff that I had, and then I'm just spending more. Mm -hmm. So with a side hustle, you get to say, all right, I'm about to go out and make X amount of sales so I can pay for this particular bill or whatever. Mm -hmm. So don't get a second job, just get a side hustle. Yeah. Way easier, way better. Way easier. And I prefer side hustles that give you the opportunity to make money daily. Yes. Um, 100%. Yeah. Like you were saying earlier, don't overthink the mm -hmm. side hustle. Like it does for a side hustle. It doesn't have to be this big, you know, amazing idea. Just sell your old clothes on the Internet. <laughs> right? right. Put for some sure. paint on a canvas. Find the yep. website. There's 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 a market for every sellable thing. Yeah. Everything is sellable. 100%. Just figure that thing out and get started right away. But appreciate the side hustle. Like that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Like appreciate, start checking off what these side hustles have allowed you to do. Yeah. Um, I know early on when I started in side hustling, in the beginning it was because I wanted to do more than my job allowed yeah. me to do. I wanted to have more money. Then I got side hustles because I wanted to make sure, you know, when I became a parent, I wanted to make sure my daughter could go to private school, mm -hmm. which she did. 
Um, then I had side hustles to make sure she could go and be in whatever activities, yeah. you know, she wanted to be in. And then it was like, okay, I want more clothes and this, that, and the other. It was like always for things. And then the list just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the side hustle becomes bigger or mm -hmm. my work ethic attached to the side hustle yeah. becomes bigger. And before you know it, it becomes a full fledged business. Yeah. 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 So I, I, so I, when we talked about targeting, the activity, like there's a purpose for the money mm -hmm. while we're starting the, the side hustle. Um, one other really important reason for actually starting a side hustle is to be able to improve your skill set. So if you have a side hustle, don't worry about the reward necessarily, but worry about what you're going to get through the activity of this side hustle. Mm -hmm. Put your brain to the test to see if you can figure out how to get this idea out of your head and into the world, whether it's a planner, whether it's a, a card game, mm -hmm. or you have this idea of, and I was gonna do this one time, where playing cards, because I just used up, love playing spades and all, all type of card games. I was like, man, I wanna, I wanna do the same thing, but I wanna, I wanna have a different back to it, like all of the old 90s characters on the back of the card. So, you know, on the back of playing cards, it's like red checks or blue checks or whatever. My thought was, yo, I'm gonna, I'm playing with cards anyway. Let me come up with something cool. Like on the back, it's just 90s themed cards. Mm -hmm. I found out that I could, that it's easy to do. You print the stuff on there. I wasn't thinking trademark infringement, but you get what I'm saying. Put whatever the back is on the cards and then I can order them wholesale and now I'm selling packs of cards. My thinking is, y'all gonna play cards anyway. Mm -hmm. My thinking is, I'm coming to every single party and there's always somebody that's like, yo, let's play cards. Who got the cards? Yeah. And it was just one too many times where somebody had to go to Walmart to go get the cards. And I was playing a lot of Tunk at that time. You play Tunk? Beat those what? cards up. Come on, man. We play Tunk. I mean, Tunk, is, it's almost like Pity Pat. It's a Southern version of You don't of play Tunk? He from up top. We didn't really play Tunk up north. That's like a little South gate. You from up top. But I didn't start playing Tunk until I came to the South my senior high school. So, um, but I'm like, oh, well, we're going to gamble with these cards. I'm always ready. I always have them on them, on me. And if somebody wins with these cards, they'll always want to play with these cards because, you know, gamblers are always superstitious. It's the cards. These yeah. are right. <laughs> so in my head, I'm just calculating how much are these cards going to cost? Mm -hmm. How much can I sell them for? Mm -hmm. And to take care of the bills that I talked about earlier, how many of these do I have to sell every day? Mm -hmm. Period. Period. Simple. Not as, it's not as hard as y'all think. It's not as hard. Um, another reason that you should start a side hustle is to create an opportunity for you to actually fulfill a purpose or a passion. Mm -hmm. Like some people have a passion or a purpose that they believe they're connected to that pays, but it pays very little. Mm -hmm. And so you are passing on it every single day when you don't really have to. Yeah. You could just literally start a side hustle doing it. I'm very passionate about fashion. Yeah. I may even, you know, and, and that passion for me in fashion turned into me owning a couple of clothing stores and doing well in the clothing stores until the internet took over and the clothing store didn't really do well anymore. Mm -hmm. um, your passion can be for, like, it will bring you. And I guess what I'm trying to also say is like for the joy mm -hmm. that it brings you, not necessarily just even the money, mm -hmm. but sometimes the side hustle is to bring you that bit of joy in your life because yeah. you are doing something that you're passionate about or purposeful. And it's one of those things that it doesn't matter how much or how little I make. I enjoy doing this so much that this side hustle is activating another sense for me. Mm -hmm. It's like satisfying another sense for me and a Allowing my life to be that much more pleasurable and enjoyable because I get to do this. That's real. Yeah. Oh, man. That's good. Mm -hmm. To fill a void in your life. To fill a void. Yeah. And you'd be amazed at how much feeling, filling a void in one area will improve other completely unrelated areas oh, in your life. You're able to stand your significant other a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You're able to have just a little bit more patience in certain Hold areas. 
Are you saying? Get you a little side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> you can stand your significant other a little more mm-hmm. with Dre, a side hustle. Dre, Dre if let's, you're let's, watching let's, this, get your side down. hustle, babe. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. <laughs> no, seriously. Sometimes the people, oftentimes, the people who are closely connected to us mm-hmm. or the closest connected to us suffer because of unfulfilled voids that we have that have nothing to do with them, but we are either consciously or subconsciously taking that resentment out on them. So just go do that thing. Sometimes it's worth it to just let your significant other go do that little side hustle so that you can have more fulfillment at home and not this resentment that they have built up, you know, from what they feel like they're missing out on because I can't do it because, you know, I have this yeah. going on. I have this relationship where I got these many responsibilities and this job and this, that, and the other. If I could just spend an hour a day working on my side hustle, I will walk in the house that much happier. Yo, that is actually the realest thing that was said on this podcast, man. Especially, like, mothers, specifically, if you have kids, mm-hmm. you start losing yourself. For sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's nothing else that you focus on or... Nothing else that you're building or letting your creative juices flow. You just you just become this mother mm-hmm. or this wife and you just play this role and you wake up and it's the same thing every single day. Yeah. And I we've we for sure experienced that. Like and I talked about it on another episode where Dre started doing the the acrylic stuff and making like cups and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. She just had to go into the garage for a little bit mm-hmm. and she come out so much happier because she's working on something. Working so on that's something. a, that is a really, really good reason to start a side hustle. Mm-hmm. Um, Jim Rohn, I think it was Jim Rohn. He said something that stuck with me. It was a question. He said, uh, how much money should you make? How much money should you make? Bree, how much money should you make? How much money should you make? At least six figures. What about you? How much money should you make? At least. Reese, how much money should you make? I want your answer. How much money should you make? Enough to live comfortably. Enough to live comfortably. Zell? Enough to live stress free. Zell? I mean, uh, Trey? Enough to be a resource. Dewan, how much money should you make? That makes as much as I want to make. Jim Rohn said, the question is, how much money should you make? And the answer is, however much you can. Mm-hmm. He said, one of the most amazing parts of life is bumping your full potential. He said, if the most that you can make is 100000 you should be making 100000 If you have the brain power, the creativity, the ambition, the love, the heart to serve other people. If your full potential is making a million dollars, you should strive to make a million dollars. He said, if your full potential, if you know you can make a hundred million and you make 10 million, you're a failure because there's so much more inside of you. He said, you need, do all that you can in this life. Yes, yes, yes. I ne- I never, ever forgot it. Yeah, and you know, we're both, taught and that's why I didn't want to answer because I already knew what the answer yeah, that's was. Why I didn't was. Ask you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that like part of my theme right now, and I don't even know if it's for the year or just mm. period, is to max out on my life experience. Mm. Because we get one life experience yeah. and I want to max out on this thing. And Jim Rohn is so right, or at least I believe he's so right, that if you know that you're capable of making a hundred million dollars and you only made 10, then you failed. Yeah. You have failed. Today, I'm failing. Yeah. I know that I'm capable of making so much more, but I also know that I'm not really doing what I should be doing to mm-hmm. make that. So I know that I've been dropping balls. I know that I've been turning down opportunities. I know that I could show up a little bit more and I just haven't been doing it. Yeah. I'm failing according to what I understand. And I'm certain my potential is a hundred percent on the other side. He was saying, yo, if, if you're bumping your full potential and making $30,000 a year and you make 30,000, you are going to live a successful life. You're a winner. You're winning. You're you're a, you're a winner. You are Absolutely. actively winning. Yeah. But the the key to all of that is 
you actually get to decide. Yeah. Like you don't yep. have to accept any amount of money, any amount of income, yeah. you get to decide. And that's a real, real thing. Maybe you can't walk into your company and go to HR and say, you know what? I know that right now I make $37,000 a year, but by this time tomorrow, my check needs to, needs to reflect $100,000 yeah. a year. You might not get <laughs> to do that. Mm -hmm. But you can say, I'll make $100,000. I need to make $100,000 and I will make $100,000. Yeah. And then you can start learning new skill sets, 100%. getting new information, creating side hustles, changing industries, become, you know, acquire more accolades. Yeah. You can act, you do get to choose. Yeah. You can actually do your work differently mm -hmm. yep. to get a different result. You get to decide. And I don't think, you know, life isn't always about like money. It's like, you know, how much time should you spend with your kids? As yes. much as you can. As much as you can. So me not spending time with my child in this moment doesn't mean I'm not spending the amount of time that I can. I'm actually out here making money, working, grinding so that we can go to Disney for a week mm -hmm. because I want to spend as much time as possible. This is a formula I don't think anybody has an answer to. Mm -hmm. This is a conversation that you have to have with you. How happy should I be? As happy as you can. Mm -hmm. You know, like how many beautiful relationships should I have? As many as you can. There's no formula because you have to create the formula for your life and what makes you happy. Yeah. So I'm coming from a lens of an entrepreneur that ex has experienced so much um, growth and development from having a side hustle. That's why I think everybody needs to have a side hustle. Something that allows you to bump your full potential. Can you go out and do so many amazing things for your family? And if you don't, the question is, should you? Like, if, you, if you're not going, if you have this idea to, to build something, the question is, should you do it? Is it okay to not to? Should you? Right. If if you know that there's something inside of you that is uh, is brewing and you, you should really, really move on this idea, doesn't your family deserve you to do it? You don't have to struggle, but you're struggling because you want to. And you feel like that you don't have to move on all these gifts that you have, which is disrespectful to the giver of gifts. Mm -hmm. So mm. y'all take that. That's good stuff. Yeah. I want to know in the comments, like how many people have just identified a side hustle mm -hmm. that you should get started on right away? There's that person. Yep. But then I also want to know how many people have a side hustle that we haven't been giving enough love and respect yeah. to. Yep. Like, dang, y'all just made me think about this one order that I've been getting every two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's a side hustle. Yeah. Like, yo, it's really difficult to monetize your own idea yeah. on one hand. But on the other hand, it's also equally simple mm -hmm. to monetize For sure. that one idea. The difficult part is in the discipline that it re that's required to learn how to do something and the consistency to continue to show up and do that something over and over and over again. Absolutely. That's what makes it difficult. Absolutely. So literally discipline Desire, I'll say discipline, desire, and consistency are the three things that's likely stopping you from creating the side hustle that you want to create or that you need to create to have the business or the money that you want right now. The discipline, desire, and the consistency. Text that to me, Bree. Dis the discipline, desire, and consistency are likely the three things that's keeping you from being able to do those home renovations, mm -hmm. that's keeping you from being able to travel anywhere other than Cancun, that is keeping you from being able to make uh, decisions. Like, you know, the average person, and, and I don't even know if it's, if it's this number today, but I know the last time I looked maybe three years ago, the average person was literally just $500 away in income from where they needed to be to be able to pay their bills on time comfortably. Mm. $500. Yeah. Discipline, desire, 
consistency. Like, how can you be so close yet so far away? The answer is probably in your desire. Are you telling yourself, I mean, it's easy for you to say that, but the world is suffering. The world is suffering. Mm -hmm. People of the world are suffering. But what about the people who are winning? What are they doing differently than me? And do I have the desire to actually sit down and figure it out? Do I have the desire to even think just a little bit differently about the situation? Do I desire to see the light at the end of the tunnel or do I desire to continue to see the darkness of the tunnel? Yeah. Right. And then the, uh, the, the, des- the discipline. Now, once I activate this desire, am I disciplined enough to actually take the steps that I've come up with? I want to be amongst people who do things just a little bit differently. Am I disciplined enough to actually take that information? And for you, that might look like what you've written down in your journal. That might look like what the mentor has said to you. That might look like the notes that you took at that event that you went to. Am I disciplined enough to sit down, take that information off the paper, out of my head, out of the notes section on my phone and actually put it to work? And then do I have now the consistency to continue to show up on that discipline that I've activated? Yeah. And the only way, I think one of the only ways that you can even test that and answer these questions is starting a side hustle. Yeah. Like there's certain things you can't learn unless you're building something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you have to, can I test my desire? What happens when things get tough? What do I do? You won't find that out until you actually do something. Until you do it. So, um, yeah. So that... That was good, Donnie. That was good. Yeah, man, absolutely. That was really I good. love this conversation. Hey, throw it in the chat. We need to know your status of your side hustle, okay? And if there's something that you've had in your head for the last three, four, five years and you haven't moved on it, I want you to ask yourself why, and I know the answer for most of you. Mm. There's no legitimate answer. <laughs> there is no legitimate you answer. You just haven't. Mm-hmm. Or in your head, there's... Some sort of most of the things we're afraid of afraid of has never even happened. Mm. If you think about all the things you're afraid of, it's probably never happened to you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For the most part, not every situation, but uh, I know the things like I'm I'm afraid of snakes, and I've never ever even really encountered a snake. <laughs> I can see if a snake bit me, and I'm like, oh, I'm afraid of that. I don't want that to happen, or. I'm afraid of getting my heart broken because my heart was broken. I I know what that feels like, so I get it. But for the most part, when it comes to business, entrepreneurship, bumping your full potential, you're afraid of something that hasn't even happened yet. Mm. So uh, let's get on it. Donnie, give them some words to live by, especially moving into this new year, this new season. Um, of it. I just, I just, I just give them a word, words of encouragement because you know that person yeah. that's in that situation that hasn't yeah. moved. Take things more seriously, Mm -hmm. like immediately, like seriously. Um, If I can encourage you in any way, it's to say it's it's time out for playing games Mm -hmm. and it's time to take things more seriously. It's time to put things to look at things under the lens of what's possible versus looking at the things under the lens of what I can't do, the reason that I can't do it, what I'm not going to be able to accomplish. And there's a reason for this. It's time for you to look at the lens of the space being available for you, the time being available for you, the desire being there and available for you and the resources that you need being there and available to you. Mm -hmm. It's time for you to start looking at your circumstances as the reason why you have to do something versus the excuse as to why you cannot. Mm -hmm. I understand you just had a newborn baby. I want you to go take a look at Pinky Cole's story right now. She also just had a new new, newborn baby, a mother of three, under three right now, who is still doing the work. And I know you're going to say, oh, well, Pinky is wealthy right now. Yep, Pinky is wealthy right now because she looks at things under the lens of what's possible versus looking at things under the lens of all the excuses that I have to support why I can't do a thing. She didn't start off wealthy. David Shands didn't start off wealthy. Donnie Wiggins didn't start off wealthy. We look at things from a different lens. And my encouragement for you today is to look at your situation under a different lens. The lens that you're looking at it from is the lens of what's possible. Facts. You can do it. You already have what it takes. And if you don't understand that you have what it takes, you have access to the resources to help you understand what it takes. And let me tell you what those resources are. 
two very powerful resources. Powerful resources. Powerful resources. You're stuck. You don't have clarity. You don't know what to do. You're saying, Donnie, I don't have what it takes. I need to ask someone. These resources get no more powerful than this. It doesn't get any more powerful than this. TheMorningMeetup.com, TheMorningMeetup.com with the David Shans, who's in there Monday through Friday, every single day, pouring into entrepreneurs. You have a question, you pull up to TheMorningMeetup.com. Like, I'm, I'm very serious about this. This is for entrepreneurs who need mentorship, who need guidance, mm-hmm. who need a community, who need connection. TheMorningMeetup.com. And then if you say, you know Hold what? Hold on, let me talk about the second resource. You oh. need this resource. Okay. And this might have been one you ain't think about. I might not have thought about this one. But if you want to be led by a true leader who understands every single aspect of entrepreneurship, from having an idea to having a job and a dream to building a big brand and having that brand taken away and having to rebuild the brand again. A multi-millionaire, someone who has not only become a multi-millionaire, but has created millionaires and multi-millionaires, you're going to want to join Actionable CEO, okay? Mm. ActionableCEO.com? Actionableceo.com. Actionable CEO. You may not even be a CEO right now, but if you need to, if you want to be a, a, a CEO, you got to take action. And she's going to take you through every single phase of wherever you are. If you're not a CEO or you are a CEO and you don't feel like a CEO because you're not making no money, it's probably because of your action. But the problem is you don't know what activity you need to take action on. And that's why you need a coach, you need a community, and you need a family that you can build with. So. Those are some really strong resources. Those are some really strong resources. Those are the resources that make you say, I don't have any excuses anymore. No excuses. Or if 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 there's a reason that I am not winning, if there's a reason that I don't know, then the only reason is that I'm choosing it. For sure. For sure. Let's so go. Take action there right now. It. Somebody, if you're going to take action, throw action in the chat. Okay? Throw action in the chat. If you are going to take action right now. Now you need help and 2024 is going to be the best year of your life. Yep. And we would be remiss if we didn't say this. We got one more resource for him. Talk to him. We got one more resource. You guys, we have created a playbook. We have a playbook. We have a playbook. So, (laughs) um, I was going to talk to you. It was good. It was going to be good, though. We'll put it, we'll record something and we'll put it in the, in like an ad in here. It's a good plan. I think you're going to like it. I think you're going to appreciate it. I'm not recording an ad today. Not with my face looking bleached. I can record an ad on Friday. Yes. Mm -hmm. Before we reveal. Before we reveal. Let me, let's have a meeting. (laughs) Yeah. Let's have it. You're gonna like it. You're gonna like this idea. I'm over you right now. You're gonna love it. You're gonna All love right. it. All right. Look in the comments. I mean, look in the if description. There's, if you there's guys. something there, <laughs> there's, <laughs> if there's something there, go ahead. Go for it. Look, look in the, look in the comments. We we've got something for you. We've got all the resources. Yeah. You know what David and I are? Just call us, aka the resource. Let's go. Let's go. We Let's out get of here. It. See y'all Peace. next week. <laughs> All right, so if you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.